The bridge collapse comes as state lawmakers are down to the final days of the legislative session. Sue Copen reports from Annapolis. In the House, we join the six families grieving the loss of their loved ones. These men chose Maryland as their home. They lived here, they worked here, their families lived here. Those men from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Mexico represent what makes our country great. And in the Senate. It's something that I believe we thought maybe that couldn't even happen, but has happened. There was recognition of the huge loss, as well as the challenges that lie ahead following Tuesday's Key Bridge tragedy. When you think about the impact of the bridge itself, of 34,000 people transported every single day, uh, it is the only thoroughfare for hazardous materials uh, through the region because hazardous materials are not permitted to go through the tunnels. Uh, and so that is a whole other um, ball of wax about the impact on transportation. And then, you know, extremely importantly, the broader impact of the port and having the front door of the port locked is, um, is unbelievably severe for the region's economy. By Wednesday morning, Ferguson had posted on social media that he and Delegate Luke Clippinger were working on emergency legislation called the Protecting Opportunities and Regional Trade Act, or Port Act. The focus of the legislation will be in three primary areas, providing income replacement for workers displaced by the shutdown of the port, provide financial support for small businesses and independent contractors, and to make available support to try to prevent a permanent move of port industries who may have to relocate during the shutdown of the port. There is gonna to have to be some diversion to other nearby ports, but we wanna make sure that there's funding available that, um, that port industries have access to that will be able to uh, make sure that that business doesn't move to another port permanently. Where would the funding come from? I mean, we already know you're in a tight budget situation. I and mean, look, this is why we stuff money into the rainy day fund. And there are also concerns about the impact of diverted local traffic on the existing infrastructure. In my district, one of the bigger concerns that I have is the Hanover Street Bridge, 110 years old, and there's gonna be traffic that gets diverted onto that bridge that would have ordinarily gone across the Key Bridge. We know this work is gonna to have to happen. We know this work is gonna to, going to have to get done. So it's not just the people who are gonna be hurting, it's gonna be that infrastructure piece. While a special commission has already begun a study of the state's transportation and infrastructure needs, the Senate president says the events of this week make that study even more potentially significant. Something like this, obviously nobody ever could have predicted or ever, ever wanted, but we did know that we had infrastructure challenges across the state. This shifts a lot. And so it's even more important now that we have those thoughtful, deliberate conversations about how are we going to be investing the limited resources that we have. For now, Ferguson says the priority is in the investigation into the Key Bridge tragedy, followed by the salvage effort. And that is going to be essential to reopen the channel, even if it's for one-way traffic, to get ships and, and um, cargo in and out. Uh, and then it's the rebuilding. I'm Sue Copen for State Circle.